Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, I've got a lot of tarantulas that are coming soon, and I've got a several here that are starting to pack, pile up behind me here, and they're gonna need some better enclosures. I wanna have nice displayable enclosures. So I picked up a few different types of terrariums, and I thought today is a good time where I could show you how to make them look a little bit more natural. So we're gonna start with just the glass boxes, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually show you how to make some backgrounds, some nice natural backgrounds for each year of vivariums. You can do them using natural products, and you use them using unnatural products, and they'll both look absolutely stunning. So stay tuned. Now, if you're as fascinated as I am by the incredible diversity of life that surrounds us in this wonderful, sometimes bizarre, natural world that we live in, then you, my friends, you belong here with me. I make videos on all sorts of facets of nature, from aquariums, vivariums, all sorts of DIY projects, reptiles, isopods, insects, arachnids, all sorts of bizarre and unique plants. And I try to do something, I try to dig a little bit deeper into the science behind it all. Now, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, as well as ring that little notification bell. You'll always be kept up to date when I upload new content. All right, so here's, so here's the first four that we're gonna get started with the right away. When I'm going to be doing them, I kind of find it kind of silly to open up a tube of great stuff or silicone or whatever type of adhesives you're going to be using, unless you're going to be using it up and doing a bunch at once. So instead of me just doing one tank, we're going to try and do four. And I thought four of them, these are granted, these are all uh, Exoterras. They're made by a company called Hagen, and uh, they are distributed worldwide. They, these are an 8 inch by 8 inch by 12 inch, and these are a 12 by 12 by 24. So these are, this is called the mini extra tall and these are the nano talls. So these, all four of these will be used for arboreal tarantulas. Now when you buy them new, they come with these, these beautiful made, uh, you know, imitation backgrounds. They're supposed to imitate nature. They're just made out of styrofoam. They have a lot of different uh, relief to them and stuff. So they're painted and they're styrofoam. So whether you like them or not, will they work? Yes, they could definitely work for most of the species, but I don't think they're pretty enough or, or as versatile as what I want. I think a little bit of tweaking and we can make these things look really, really sexy. So this one here, other factors, what if, you're, if you bought one used? Well, you buy one used, it's probably not gonna come with the styrofoam or it's gonna look really sketchy. So the thing you might wanna do is we wanna also then be able to build a background using natural materials. Now everyone knows about using cork and cork rounds and stuff like, but where I live, we also have uh, oak and oak is, uh, is nice, nice, heavy, heavily textured. And this is the bark that I strip off the oak trees, dead oak trees, make sure that's noted. Uh, and I use this for, uh, as a substrate for uh, isopods. And I culture a lot of isopods. Every fall, I'm always out collecting not only leaves from isopods through the winter, but also lots of nice pieces of bark. But just look at the texture in that stuff. And I think some of these would make an outstanding background as well. It'll blend well with the type of forest floor type materials that we're gonna use. You notice that these ones do not have a very deep layer before the door, so these are not really for burrowers. These are not for fossorial tarantulas. Uh, the bigger arboreal ones do have a large space of about six inches where we can put a lot of, a lot of substrate there. But, so we're going to get ready and get started on these backgrounds. One thing to note is I am going to use some of these backgrounds for, for, for some of the tanks. I'm going to get them all ready, and what I'm going to do is you're going to go and Prepare the background first. And what I mean by preparing is the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to flip that background over. Now you do not see it on this one here, but I've already shaved away the channels. There was a large ridge here, a large ridge that went from here to here, and a large ridge here. And it was about a half inch worth of space. And it was intended that you could be able to ride your electrical cables down into the bottom of the terrarium for a mister or a heating pad or whatever type of electronics that you would have been using within that terrarium for whatever animal you were having. But if we're gonna be keeping arboreal tarantulas, they have a, an, a, an adaptability in their body structure. They can definitely find a way to get into absolutely the smallest crevices, which is why I want to use this nice natural stuff with all these different fissures. And I'll let the boreal tarantulas really find a nice little nook and cranny to live in. They'll just blend in right with it. Now the other background that came with the bigger ones, it's, a, it's not bad looking, but you can see I've already cut some holes in it by accident when I was shaving off the back. By shaving off the back, it's a very, very thin background. But that's no problem. It's still totally usable. Uh, this one's got a lot of texture and a lot of relief, and it does look very arboreal already. So what we're going to do with them is we're going to get this table all cleaned up and then we're going to get set up and ready to do it. Now our approach that I, I prefer to use over the, over the unnatural, like the styrofoam look, even though that styrofoam in, that, in those big tall ones is, you know, 
pretty slick looking. It looks like trees. You know, we cover this with some substrate and some stuff, some cocoa fiber and some oak leaves and whatnot. I think this will look really, really natural. And I think we will do that for one of them. But as you guys have seen in some of my other videos, like the big beast build, I'll put a link up here in the corner, you know, using cork bark, or in this case, we're going to use probably oak bark. Next thing we got to do is I've laid them down on their backs. So here's the, the, here's the fronts. Here's the open doors on the big one. I've laid them down on their back. And what I'm doing now is I'm kind of dry fitting to see what this looks like. You know, I'm finding nice different textures and stuff for the arboreal spiders, particularly the ones that are going to be going in, in the first tall one is going to be the big Pasiliothera regalis. The, the Indian ornamental. So I want to make sure she has a nice, beautiful hide that she can feel nice and secure in. That looks really good. So those ones fit nice and tight. The reason I don't go all the way to the bottom is I don't have to because the bottom is going to be taken up by mostly substrate. So the substrate will come up to probably about the bottom of where those pieces of bark end. And these other pieces, these are going to be filled in with silicone and then we're going to push the soil, uh, the substrate down on top of it. So it's going to blend in. All the seams will be gone. Exactly like in that beast build that we did before. Okay, I think I finally come up, uh, you know, playing a bit of, playing with my pieces of cork, like my Lego blocks. And I think I've come up with something that I kind of like. So this is the big one. This is viewed from the top opening with the screen taken off, so kind of an unnatural view. But we're going to get using the great stuff next. We'll get these in place. I'm ready to go and start putting it all together. Now, there's a couple of things that are important to note. First, all the oak bark that I'm using was all sustainably harvested. It was harvested off of dead trees. Uh, in a clean area, so I know that no pesticides or herbicides are being used in that area because I live out in the country. And secondly, it's all been sterilized uh, because I save a large quantity of it over the winter, uh, so I always have it for isopods and so forth and doing vivariums, I always go and sterilize it. And to sterilize it, I stack them all on cookie sheets, all these different pieces, and I throw them in the oven about 350 for about 15 minutes or so. And that's just so I don't introduce any pathogens or other, uh, other pa uh, insects or, or whatever to any of my uh, isopod colonies or my vivariums. Now, I've gone and gotten the things already. I've gone and given them a quick wipe down with some rubbing alcohol to make sure the surface is about as clean as I can get it. And honestly, that's about all there is to it. If you've never used the product before, it's an expanding foam and it works very, very quickly. So you're gonna wanna re work fairly quickly when using it. And the other thing I would recommend is I would always recommend using gloves. Uh, I use it all the time, so I've gotten pretty used to using it. You don't have to worry about going a little bit heavy-handed with this product because honestly a lot of this product we're going to be uh, taking away anyway. When we go to put the silicone on afterwards, silicone would only adhere to the areas that have been scraped away that expose the actual foam. The outside edge of the foam is going to have this shiny texture to it and it won't work for uh, applying silicone. See, that one is done. Now we're going to let that sit for 24 hours and then the next step is, is really, really easy and it's kind of fun. Well, that gives you an overview. You can see it doesn't look nice and pretty. It's all very, very messy in installing it. And I went very specifically down to a certain line down here because it matches very roughly where the substrate's going to be. And that way the substrate will cover any sort of line. It'll look like this actually just continues right down to the bottom of the vivarium. But we're going to let this cure overnight. And then we're going to go and peel away that whole hard layer. And we're going to bring it down just so we have a nice sponge layer below that'll take the silicone. And as I say, it's easy. This will just pop off once it's dry. Easy, easy. Looking good. While we wait for those natural backgrounds to cure, let's get these ones ready. Cover them with silicone, rub it all in so the whole surface is covered. Obviously using gloves for this because it's a very messy and sticky job. And then into the bin, cover it with your substrate mix, pat it down, tamp it off, you got a beautiful background. All right, so it's been, uh, it's been sitting overnight, it's all hard. All this stuff is honestly very easy to come up. So you got this big bubble, just basically pop the big bubble off. We can rip as much parts as you want out of it. This is actually the fun phase where we got to clean it all up. And basically what we want to do is we've got to expose that inner foam. And uh, we can chip away as much as possible so it looks natural. You know, you can use, I've often used tools such as a spoon or 
you know. But honestly, I prefer just use people talk about using a razor knife. I use my fingers for most part of it. And then we're just gonna keep peeling away until we told you it was gonna be messy, but we peel it away until we get that all that inner foam exposed. And no big raised edges that the foam sticks out higher than the bark. Well, we've done the initial cleanup and everything already, as you can see, and it's right down to the bare foam. Now, the one thing I did notice is that once I flipped them around, that I noticed on the particular on this one is that the bottom had an opening in behind. So after I did that, is I went and refilled the bottom. You can see all the new foam has now filled up all that space. Because I'm gonna be dealing primarily with Boreals, I don't wanna have any chance of them getting behind the background. So this one here, we're gonna let this one sit let it sit for a day and then we're going to go and clean that all up tomorrow morning. I did one little patch up here at the top and we'll get that one all cleaned up. Here's some close-up of how the texture works. We've got it right down to the bare foam and once it's all camouflaged and, and, and silicone and, and the substrates added to it, it'll blend right in that you won't even see it. So you don't even notice that this was a piece that was added in. Now that they're ready, we're going to put those uh, artificial backgrounds in place. We're going to cover up any little imperfections. And then we're going to get started on the natural backgrounds. We're going to apply, same as we did for the artificial ones, we're going to apply a thin layer of silicone and spread it on any of the areas where we want the, the substrate to adhere to. We spread the substrate, tamp it off, let's work on the next. It's a messy project, but it's a quick and easy project. And it should give you many, many years of service. Here's some detail on the, the modified styrofoam background that came with the Exoterra with the substrate added. Lots of texture and detail. And now on the other case, here is the natural background using the natural oak bark and just the areas in between filled in. Both nice natural looking displays perfect for arboreal tarantulas and same and same thing again on the smaller ones well hopefully you've enjoyed my little diy tutorial on how i go about making natural backgrounds for my vivariums could be used for tarantulas lizards whatever as always my friends thank you for watching take care